Hiya, this is the first vid for the third lesson of the functions pack and it's all about inverses, which is quite nice really. So the, the idea of an inverse is you go back to the original function. Um, now the notation for an inverse is f to the minus 1 of x. Not f dashed of x, which is differentiated, and not 1 over f of x. It's f to the minus 1 of x. So you have to be careful. So it's not indices, it's not differentiated. It tells you it's the inverse. So the inverse function performs the... Now they've used the opposite operations. Um, it's a little bit more than the opposite, but we'll go with that. So if I started off with x as an input, I multiply it by 2. Do you remember doing these um, from school? That I've got a value in primary school. So I multiply it by 2, I get 2x. And then I add 3 to it, I get 2x add 3. So that's my f of x, that's what I've got. Now the inverse goes backwards, and it's what I need to do to get back. So I'm starting at 2x plus 3, and I'm getting back. So it's kind of like a rearrange, really. Uh, so I'm just going to put x here, although it's not kind of strictly, okay? Then subtract 3, I've got x minus 3, and then I'm going to divide it by 2. So that's kind of the operations I need to go to get back. Right, so, so we've got a mapping. So I've got a mapping that goes from A to B, and the inverse takes me back there. So it talks about um, squaring and square rooting. So if I start off with x, if I square root it, if I square root, I get x squared. If I start off with x, I get plus or minus the square root of x. So I've got an issue here. So if you think, if I started off with 3, if I square it, I get 9. But going back, if I square root it, I get plus or minus 3. And this is where my, my issue is. To have an inverse, it has to be a 1 to 1. I have to go back to where I started from. So it says here, inverse operation of, oh, they've got a G there. Uh, well, let's put, let's switch that F into a G. Then you're happy that we can use other letters. So the inverse operation is a plus or minus root X. So why does G of X not have an inverse? Because you're not sure where it's going back to. It can go back to... Plus 3 or minus 3. And what we need is it to go back to just the plus 3. So for here, so we got two possibilities. I'm not sure. one is correct. We need to go back to where we started from. So we want to make it um, make it one to one. So it says that only one to one functions have an inverse. So with this one, to make it one to one, I'll just point it at the board. You can't see that one, can you? So with this one, it says here we need to restrict the domain. So I want to make it that x is greater than or equal to zero. So when I square it, I can only have positives. So x is greater than or equal to zero in terms of the domain would lead to an inverse, which is just a positive root of x. And that's OK, then, because I haven't got the two options there. OK. So one-to-one -one functions. And if you have a many-to-one, then we'll just restrict it. So we'll get rid of the bits we don't want. Right. So I'm getting a one-to-one. -one. Um, 
let's have a look. So we've got like a way of doing it. So first thing is to change the f of x into y equals. So I've got y equals 2 over x minus 1. Now there's a reason we swap the x and y over, which we talk about um, in maybe later on. I think it is later on. But the idea is that you kind of do a reflection in the line y equals x. So it's quite nice and easy now. So I'll just swap the x and y over. And then I want to make y the subject. So if I switch them over, I've got y take 1 is 2 over x. So y is 1 plus 2 over x. So that's my third step. So first step, make it y equals. Second step, swap x and y. Third step, rearrange for y. And then fourth step is just to say it's f to the minus 1 of x. Or g to the minus 1 of x, or h to the minus 1 of x, whatever it is. Now we need to state what the domain is. So going back to this original function, it's like a 1 over the x graph, but it's been shifted 1 to the right. So the original graph has got an asymptote of 1. And it looks like that. It's a little bit steeper maybe, but that's what it looks like. So if you look at the, the, um, the domain, so the domain is that x belongs to the reals, such that x is an equal to 1. That's my 1. Now the range for this is that f of x belongs to the reals. So it does all the y values apart from uh, equal to 0. So that's your range. Now there's something we don't talk about at the moment, but the the domain of the function is actually the range of the inverse. Because of this swapping x and y over, which means that the range of the function is the domain of the inverse. You're not going to like that, but you just get used to it. So I want to state the range of the domain of the inverse. So if you look at the original function, the range of the original function is everything apart from zero. So that means that the domain of the inverse, so f to the minus 1 of x, belongs to the real numbers. So this is the, the uh, oh no, sorry, this is the x value, isn't it? Because it's the domain and not the range. It's the x value of the graph. Sorry about that, everyone. So it belongs to the real numbers, but it's not equal to zero and the range of the inverse is the domain of the real bit which was not equal to one so this is f to the minus one of x belongs to the real numbers but the y values of the inverse graph aren't equal to one there 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 we go that's a little bit messy, that one. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Right, so I think on the next page, let's look on the next page, because I'm going to stop it in a second. So there's another example, and then there's some more bits to do. But I'll just stop it there, because that was a bit full.